Okay, WrestleMania, as we know, is right around the corner in Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia in a couple of weekends. But the Friday before, on April 5th, this man's going to be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Throw to have here on the Rich Eisen Show for the first time, the great superstar himself, Paul Heyman. How are you, sir? I'm lonely. I wish I was there with you. Glad to, I don't want you to fly me in for this. You know what? Uh, <laughs> uh, next time. Next time. We'll, we'll get uh, we'll get Roku on that. We'll so, get... so, so, this, so this one's the audition to oh, actually no. be there. No, Paul, I would have I it just again, uh, I know you're used to the private jet treatment. <laughs> I, I would never I'd never want to throw you just in a mere first class. You know what I'm saying, Paul? I don't I don't want to do that to you. I, I, I respect that. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. <laughs> hey, uh, congrats on the uh, the induction into the hall of fame uh, thank you thank you thank you very much you got your speech all written out do you got a speech going here what do you got no i'm i'm gonna figure this out as we go along uh i'm gonna take the, the pulse of the room that night i'm gonna wing this because i i, I don't know i don't know really what, what the crowd itself is expecting from me you know it, is is this a crowd that wants me to talk about um the, the 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 modern day WWE and Roman Reigns and the Bloodline and the WrestleMania main event of Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes is this a crowd that you know in Philadelphia wants to talk about ECW uh, is is this a crowd that's looking for some in, in, inspiration in a speech about pursuing one's own dreams etc cetera, etc cetera. I really won't know till I, I take the temperature of the room that night and as you know better than I you always have to know your audience yes. Yeah. So once once I feel the crowd, uh, I'll pretty much know what I have to do to, to deliver for them. Well, then let, let's kick some tires on this. Let's try and work this thing together. Let's workshop it, Paul. Uh, you okay. know, you know, I'm, uh, I feel like we're Mishpuka. I'm from Staten Island. <laughs> you're you're what? You're Bronx. You were born in the Bronx. Is that, you, is that where you're from? Yeah, I'm, I'm originally from the Bronx. I I can't really take credit for you know being a Bronx street kid because uh, we moved to Westchester when I was four. Okay. You know, but, <laughs> the, mean, uh, the mean streets of Westchester. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So I, I, I was in South Central Westchester. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, you know, where the polo ponies roam free. Understood. Uh, Understood. So, uh, but I mean, I, but, but yeah, my first four years, I was on Bainbridge Avenue and Gun Hill Road. My my grandmother was over on DeKalb looking across the street at Montefiore Hospital. Oh, sure. So, you know, I, did, so I, I am originally a Bronx boy, but, you know, o only to the extent of, you know, as, as, as a toddler. Okay. Bronx-born Westchester bred Paul Heyman right here on the Rich Eisen Show. So how did you first get involved with wrestling, Paul? Uh, well, like, 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 like all good Jew boys, I, I took my <laughs> mitzvah money and invested it in something. And then this time it, it happened to be a camera and, and, some, and some photo equipment to develop the film. Uh, and I, I never wanted to be in front of the camera. I always wanted to be behind the scenes. Uh, you know, you know the old the old actor's adage of all I want to do is direct. Um, so, I, uh, I I I wanted to get on the inside of the business, mm -hmm. and I used my camera to 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 BS my way inside Madison Square Garden as a photographer, uh, and and from there st started peddling my pictures to the wrestling magazines, uh, and from there started to take over wrestling magazines, uh, be and, and and started to know everybody from within the business. Because I just never wanted to be on the outside of it. I, I never, uh, I, I just, I just never wanted to be one of many. I, I always wanted to be on the inside presenting the show. I just never had the patience to sit in the audience and watch a show. Right. So, what was your big break then? What what photograph uh, or moment uh, caught the eye that started everything going for you? I, I took a picture of Vince McMahon Sr., Vincent James McMahon, who was the promoter at the time of Madison Square Garden, standing in the hallway with Andre the Giant, because I used to use 400 ASA film. This was way before digital. Sure. Um, and uh, it was very, very fast film. You didn't need flash with it. So as I'm walking down the hallway about to take a right to go out to the ring to cover the matches, Vince Sr. is in the hallway with Andre the Giant. So because I had this fast film, I had the camera down down low, which actually made Andre look even more <laughs> massive than he actually was. And just sort of and took 36 pictures, hoping I'd get one really good one out of it. I happened to get three really good ones out of it. I developed the pictures. I I, I had a uh, photo release drawn up, and the next month I gave it to Vince McMahon Sr. 
And, uh, you know, young man, you're very entrepreneurial. Are you, uh, are you in school? And at the time I was in, you know, I was in junior high school, uh, <laughs> but, but, but I looked older and I had a deeper voice and I said, yes, sir, I am. He goes, so you're working your way through school. And my answer was, well, I'm trying to. And, uh, cause I wasn't going to tell him I'm in high school. <laughs> I don't think I'm in college. And he, he, uh, he folded up a $50 bill Vegas style and he, you know, he shook my hand and he goes, oh, contribute to your transportation fund for coming down to the garden and throw some, throw some books of your education. And the next, the next month, bring me a couple more pictures and uh, we'll do business this way. So for, for, for the next garden shows uh, throughout his life, I would go and bring uh, Vince Sr. some pictures and to which he'd give me 50 bucks per show. Huh. And I'd spend 30 seconds with the man and, and get away from him because I, I, I knew not to overstay my welcome or, or get busted for being a teenager. <laughs> uh, from there, I just started both, you know, BSing my way into getting covers of magazines and eventually taking over wrestling magazines for, for which I had now a platform that yeah. Uh, actually did get me a press pass into events all around the world. So then what, which is the first wrestler for those who may not know that really took you uh, on and you became their wise man and things took off from there, Paul? Uh, you mean as a performer? Yeah, sure. Yes. Uh, well, I mean, as a performer, I got to know all the power brokers, yes. uh, like, 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 like Dusty Rhodes, Cody Rhodes' father. Yep. Uh, you know, as a photographer, I, I snuck into production meetings that Dusty Rhodes was running when he was uh, the opposition to WWE down south with Jim Crockett Promotions and the NWA and WCW. And uh, I got called out of the room by Dusty, and he asked me what I was doing there. When I told him I'm there to learn from him, um, he actually let me go back into the meeting. And by the time three or four other meetings took place every other week, I ended up in the front row learning from Dusty Rhodes. So uh, it, it, once I knew all the power brokers, uh, it was easy as, as a talent at 21 years old breaking in to get put with either big stars or future big stars that I, I, I could then learn with, learn from, and rise up the cards with. So when did Studio 54 come into play? How the hell did uh, that so happen, you, Paul? I was, ni I was 19 years old. Awesome. And, um, and there was a... There was a uh, there was a charity event at Studio 54. And I called the press agent for it and said, listen, I, I know a bunch of wrestlers on national TV. And this was during the time of the first WrestleMania, which had all the publicity in the world because of Hulk Hogan and Mr. T. And I said, I could bring some nationally televised wrestlers down to Studio 54, and I could arrange for at least one cover of a magazine, if not three. He just got to let me in the door with, with my camera. And because it was a charity event and a lot of media was there, they let me in. As, as luck would have it on this night, the house photographer at Studio 54 was drunk off of his ass. <laughs> and he started throwing vodka bottles at the bartenders. One of whom, by the way, was Christopher Maloney, who went on to be one of the biggest television stars of all time. Sure. Okay. And I was standing next to a gentleman named Worsham Rudd, who was the director of Studio 54. And this was like Humphrey Bogart in Casablanca. This guy had run nightclubs in New York dating back to Regines and the Copacabana, and now he's running Studio 54. And I see the security tackle the house photographer and throw him out the door. And I, I, I watched this guy get thrown out, and I looked over at Rudd and said, isn't that your house photographer? And he says, well, he was. <laughs> and I said, well, uh, don't, don't you need a new house photographer? And he says, well, I do. And I said, well, I'm, I'm volunteering for the job. And I got hired on the spot. And, and then one thing leads to another, leads to another, and I become an in-house publicist. And one thing leads to another, leads to another. And I start producing and, and, and promoting Friday nights at Studio 54. Oh my all, all 19 years old. And, and with no experience, except the experience that I'm getting on the job, but that you know that w w what better experience and what, and, and what better thing to, to have on your resume than learning as you go along. So the Heyman hustle began as a teenager. It's basically what I'm picking up. Oh, I was hustling just coming out of the womb. <laughs> <laughs> See, we're working. If you don't, if you haven't realized, we're working the edges of a Hall of Fame speech here, Paul. You know what I mean? Like there's there's some things that we can we can work. We can work part of this in and then move our move our way through. But I'm fascinated by the Studio 54 part of this thing here. G give me give me give me a good story that you're willing to tell. 
from back uh, well, in that you day, know, Matt. What do you got? You know, the, the, the old expression about Studio 54 is th those who claim to remember being at Studio 54 obviously never went. <laughs> um, <laughs> there are... Uh, there are, there are a lot of stories in which the statute of limitations have run out now. About <laughs> I love that. Um, you know, it, it's uh, so much celebrity. I, you got a good celebrity in the sightings that that, uh, that that jumps out at you from 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 the heyday. Hey. There is, and 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 I'm and I'm going to disappoint you now terribly. I'm sure. Uh, the, the the one thing I, I I really hate is people who gossip. Uh, you okay. know, even you know, like even when I watch people tell stories, and, I, and I was like, "Oh, well, why? Why would you ever tell that story? Is, isn't that isn't that something personal?" And and people that were celebrities that were coming to Studio Fifty Four that ended up on my camera reel, at least, uh, were there to have a good time and and enjoy themselves. And and if enjoying themselves, they they did something scandalous or crazy. Mm. Uh, you know, e even though it's back in nineteen eighty five. And most of them are dead now. Uh, you know, for, for me to gossip about them, one, most of the stories no one would actually ever truly believe. You're going to think I'm embellishing them or exaggerating them. Uh, two, here's what I can tell you about Studio 54 back in 1985. Forget the Playboy Mansion. This thing was like Caligula. <laughs> it, it, it was like Roman times. It, it was a nonstop 24-7, 365 orgy that allegedly closed its doors at 4 o'clock in the morning was last call. And the party really started around 4.45. Very good to know. I will accept that as an answer, Paul Heyman. Uh, speaking of Roman, let's talk about your present day. Do you like that as a little turn? How's that? With, how's, it, was, how's... it was a great segue. Thank you, sir. This is why pay you the big bucks. Thank you, sir. I greatly appreciate it. I'm working my way up to private jet status. Um, <laughs> so uh, with, the, with, with Roman Reigns and your relationship with him, this guy could have crushed it in any generation, Paul? Doesn't matter, yeah. the current generation? At, he, Roman Reigns would be the greatest star in the industry, no matter what generation he came across in. Well, what what jumped out at you when you first met him, Paul? I first met Roman Reigns when he was three years old, and his father, Sika of the Wild Samoans, brought him into the locker room in Panama City, Florida. And and, and even at three years old, he had so much charisma. I mean, I, I thought he was going to become a child star. You know, like a child actor, like Ron Howard or or whomever. You know, just he, he he Roman had so much charisma, even at three years old. Just well, how nice to meet you. You know, just shaking your hand, and you look into those piercing eyes and you say, "Oh my God, this kid's a star, and he's three years old." Just he had that intangible it factor. You just knew you were in the presence of someone or something special, even though. It's a three-year-old kid running around. Well, what if somebody had told you when that three-year-old kid and you met him that, that you were going to be the wise man for this kid when he's going to dominate uh, the WWE and the wrestling world in the in the way that uh, I, I don't even think you could even fathom how significant the wrestling world is now based back even then. I mean, how significant oh. it is now. What if somebody had told you that back then, Paul? I would have signed, I would have signed a kid just like that. A hundred percent. If you told me I had an opportunity to sign him at three years old, I'd have that contract drawn so fast. I wouldn't give anybody, anybody a chance to talk him out of it. And then, of course, there's the biography that you are the director and producer of, WWE Legends, featuring Roman Reigns, that's going to be um, airing on A&E, debuting March 31st. So that's, but I mean, a heck of a week is coming up soon, Paul, from yeah, that all yeah, the way through to the end of your uh, to, to your induction and then and then WrestleMania. That's coming up. And, and, and then, by the way, two successive main events on, on Saturday and Sunday at WrestleMania. It, it, it happens to be a little bit of a busy week for us. Um, the, the biography of Roman Reigns is an interesting situation because it speaks to the persona and the character of, of, of Joe Anawai, who is Roman Reigns. Um, because when they approached us, he did not want it to be like, like any other A&E biography. So the first thing that he demanded was that I direct it and produce it so that it has a different feel to it, so that it captures the core of the man as well as the character and the persona. So our approach was not only, as we do with everything, to, to produce and, and present what we hope is the greatest biography that's ever been seen on A&E, 
you know, lofty goals admitted uh, or, or something that's worthy of an Emmy. Um, if the Emmy Awards would get their heads out of their asses and actually take a look at the work that we've been doing together. Uh, but also just to present a, you know, if, if you're a WWE fan, this is what we feel the the quintessential, the ultimate, the, the disruptive, the, the, the state of the art biography. And if you're not a WWE fan, you've never heard of the Tribal Chief Roman Reigns, that this biography is so compelling that you're riveted by it and you tune in and go down the rabbit hole because you're so compelled to watch this story. Well, I mean, you know this already, Paul, but I'll, I'll do, I'll do, you know, I always like leaving my guests in a better spot. Uh, you know, you're supposed to schmooze the Emmy voters, not point out the orifice <laughs> in which their head resides. Right, Paul? You're, you're... Well, you know, we've been schmoozing and, 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 and presenting and sending out press releases and begging and imploring uh, and, 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 and bribing for, you know, how many decades? And, and, and we get no love. We get no flowers back. So now comes the time to uh, blackmail, cajole, or, uh, or, or, or point out aforementioned orifice. That's right. For your consideration to remove your head from your ass... Long enough yes. to give us an Emmy nomination or an award for the WWE legends featuring Roman Reigns, the biography. Uh, what is what's your opinion on The Rock coming into the four again, Paul? What do you have I, there? The, the most brilliant move Dwayne Johnson has 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 ever made is to uh, is is to jump on this uh, runaway train of success that all started in August 2020 when Roman Reigns had an opportunity to come back as the tribal chief and lift sports entertainment itself, the entire industry, out of the pandemic into unfathomable heights to where WWE is part of a $21 billion merger with UFC and 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 uh, an Endeavor, uh, you know, creating TKO Holdings Group. Um, and, and The Rock sees the success. And The Rock sees the, the, the global enormity of the success of WWE led by Roman Reigns and the rock now brings his considerable star power and his team and his efforts uh and 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 all that goes with being Dwayne the Rock Johnson the single biggest box office attraction in movies today to WWE to me it's yet another merger just like WWE and UFC it's now the Roman Reigns led WWE product and all that comes with The Rock and being the biggest movie star in the world and you merge those two universes and now you have a multiverse. There you have it. Well, I, it's a team effort here, Paul, just like where, where you are as well. I've got my Rich Eisen show wrestling aficionado, TJ Jefferson, who adores you and adores everything about the sport of wrestling. And before uh, I let you go on with your day, I'd love to hand things off to you, TJ. Appreciate it. You that. have the floor with the great Paul Heyman. Well, you know, when we have the wise man, when we do have the great Paul Heyman in house, it was necessary for me to break out my Dangerous Alliance t-shirt there, Paul, to, to show respect to one of the greatest, most underrated factions in the history of professional wrestling, the faction that you led with Stone Cold Steve Austin, Larry Zbysko, Arn Anderson, Rick Rude, Medusa. So I do have a question, but I want to just give you your flowers first because I've been a fan of yours since I was about 13, 14 years old, seeing everything that you've done coming up with the phone as Paulie Dangerously to the Dangerous Alliance. Oh, dangerous, and that's right. Bringing in ECW. And you guys might not know about ECW, but what it did is it changed the face of wrestling forever by the hardcore reality style, which Paul led. And Rich, just to give you an idea, I was at a show in Pittsburgh once and there was a big kind of like a trash bin outside. And you notice that people would bring items with them. People around me in line, this is just what I saw, an old key computer keyboard, a, a vacuum cleaner, a broom, and there was something else. And at one point during the show, New Jack, some music hits, and you, he brings this garbage bin out and you could smell the disinfected. You can smell the Lysol just permeating through this gym. And literally everything that I saw people had in, in, in line, Paul, New Jack picked out and used and like literally beat to death whoever he was fighting. That's the, and, and the crowd loved it. And that was, that was ECW. And that was just a beautiful thing. So when you talk about your speech, you said you don't know what they want you to talk about in Philadelphia. I'm sure ECW will be or should be a big part. And that being said, now I'll get to the question. 
when you and Roman did get together, it was during the pandemic, like you said. We didn't really have fans in, in there. We didn't have a, a big storyline. It happened at the end of Raw, if I'm not mistaken. The camera pulls back. You're sitting on the couch next to Roman, and that was it. How did that come together? When did you guys decide that that was the right time to kind of combine forces? Because you've worked with his cousins, the other Samoans in, in, in the past, but how did you decide that this was the moment? Well, Roman and I had been talking about working together for many, many years, and it just the timing was never right in that WWE was presenting him as the big dog, as the big hero, um, as, you know, th this WrestleMania main eventer to follow in the steps of John Cena. And I was the advocate for Brock Lesnar, and just leaving that position would have been insane. Uh, I also then became the executive director of, of Monday Night Raw, now the pandemic hits, and Brock Lesnar uh, wraps up his time in WWE and, and goes off to Saskatchewan to hunt and kill what he puts on the, the family's <laughs> dinner plates. Um, you know, the entire landscape of sports and entertainment and sports entertainment is changing, and Roman Reigns had taken time off because uh, his wife had given birth to an, another set of twin boys, and also because of the pandemic, and, and, and his health concerns mm -hmm. regarding staying safe for his family during the, the, this, this unfathomable uh, health crisis that was gripping the entire world. So in August 2020, when I'm Brock Lesnar free, I'm no longer the executive director of Raw, so I'm in the ocean of obscurity mm -hmm. at, at the moment. And Roman Reigns agrees to come back to WWE if he's allowed to portray himself and we get a chance to work together. He rescued me from the ocean of obscurity, pulled me onto the island of relevancy with him, and we have been together ever since. I love it. It's been a, an amazing uh, partnership. And, you know, again, Paul, like I said, the Dangerous Alliance, it, 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 was, it was a big deal to, to us true wrestling fans. That, and, wow. And, uh, yeah, man, that. it's it's amazing. It, it's great. Wrestling is in just a, such a phenomenal spot right now and you know i thank you for all you've done and i can't wait for wrestlemania i can't wait to see where this bloodline goes you said after wrestlemania last year you were in the third inning what do you think you're in maybe like the top of the fifth now just oh every, every time i talk about innings uh, you know it, it gets shoved up my tuchus um <laughs> you know and uh and, and and of course we're saving all orifice references for the for these, <laughs> true people very good um so uh i, I also I, I i i've kind of gotten away now from baseball analogies uh, because I, 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 I've, I've learned in my experience that baseball is fake. <laughs> so, I, um, you know, I, I, whatever inning that we're in, we're dominating that inning. You are, yes. And it's a game that I would suggest may go into many extra innings as well. And some of that we have to give credit to the final boss, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, for adding a whole new set of layers and therefore innings to the story of the bloodline. Well, thank you for bringing your fastball to this program, Paul Heyman. Uh, from everything, from all the stories to the geography lesson, make a note that the uh, island of relevancy rests in the ocean of obscurity. <laughs> I, I now know all that. TJ's been taught the word tuchus. It means but oh yeah I knew okay that. very good uh and congratulations on everything coming up from the march 31st debut of biography wwe legends featuring roman reigns that you sir directed and produced debuting on a e and then there will be the april 5th induction into the wwe hall of fame ahead of wrestlemania xl saturday april 6th and sunday april 7th in philadelphia at lincoln financial field which you can see exclusively here on Roku, on Peacock. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.